My name is Alexander Vapirev, and uh, I work as a HPC analyst and consultant at uh, Carl Julen at uh, the Flemish supercomputer. We are supporting users from all over the place uh, with different uh, different requirements, different uh, needs. And my job is uh, mostly towards oriented towards uh, computational and data science support, especially for uh, bioinformatics. Although I graduated uh, as a physicist, I have PhD in physics, but it was computational physics. So it was choosing this path towards towards data science and uh, computational support and, and, and analysis. It was just just very natural. Um, Besides, um, I really like it. It is something that I really wanted to do. So um, there, is, there, was no, there was no question which way to go, at least in my case. In the beginning, I don't think I have a very clear vision of what I wanted to do. I just wanted to do science and research. And I really like computers, so I wanted to stay in computational science. And I really like data, so I really wanted to be as close as possible to doing things with data. However, uh, one thing is you to want something, but another thing is to have clear vision where you want to go. And uh, during my PhD and after that, I really didn't have an idea, and I have to say that it was a lack of information, which uh, that was the cause of it. Uh, my uh, professional circle was very small, very narrow, so my view towards the world was very, very limited. Uh, later, when I started making professional contacts, I figured out that oh yes, this is an option, this is a prob this is a probability, this this is a thing that I was really wanted to do. So. Naturally, that led to uh, high-performance computing. There is a lot of different skills, a lot of different things one needs to do, uh, to have in their vocabulary when uh, dealing on a day-to-day -day basis with users from so many different backgrounds. Besides the technical skills that you have to be able to uh, program and uh, the knowledge about how high-performance computing works, uh, there is also a lot of things that, unfortunately, at least not at my time, during my time, they did not teach us at universities uh, or in high school or anywhere where I've studied. Uh, how to deal with people from different backgrounds, which I do it all the time, how to, uh, how to organize, how to schedule, how to think as a team player, because in general, science and hardcore research has grown up as one person or a very small team doing something and trying to reach the goal. In high performance computing and data science, it's not that the case. It is a lot of people. A lot of things depend on different people with different needs, with different timelines, with different schedules. And uh, this is uh, to collect all that into a project and make it go forward and be part of that project. This is, uh, this is something that not everybody uh, teaches at school. So this is something that I had to learn, and I think a lot of my colleagues also, they had to learn on the way. If one would to be pursue a career in, in this field, computational science, data science, um, be open-minded. Don't, don't just think that being a good programmer or knowing, you know, how data is organized is enough. No, you need to understand the reason why the data is there. It's actually good to go all the way down to where it came, 
to the source to understand what people were thinking when they actually created or wanted to create that data set and also even go behind further behind programming down there on the line and understand you know how architecture computer architecture works only then you will be able to merge those two things and create something which makes sense because people with data they will have questions and people who created the computers they usually they don't know what kind of data problems there exist they just create a general architecture so it is good if you are open-minded it is good if you don't just go along the well written path look sideways ask questions don't be afraid to ask questions it's, this is something which not everybody is comfortable with but ask questions ask questions ask questions to your teachers and if especially if you're if you're a student if you're now in school uh, you have no idea how many teachers actually wait for students to ask questions it is so disappointing you teach a course and nobody asks a question <laughs> this is this is this is a devastating thing for a teacher so approach the teacher ask them what the possible applications uh, what probably and if you think further what are the possible career choices you could take most of the students from what i understand is uh, form approximately their idea what they would like to do in life in the later high school years okay so it is very, very important very important very important for uh, teachers to propagate the message what are the possible choices and hopefully if those teachers work with outside sources those outside sources will also give information because teachers are just humans and they they know they're good specialists but if they work with as a team with companies if they work as a team with universities who can pro which can provide a broader uh, picture of what students can do after high school this will be very helpful I think I'll be doing the same, or about the same. It's just, uh, I never have had any regrets of my career choices. It is the skills that define the person and not your diplomas. So if you are a good specialist, if you understand how things work, or if you are willing to understand, to ask the question how things work, then I don't think you have a problem, you know, going back in time and choosing the same career. <laughs> <laughs>